Good evening, beloved. I need you to further also appreciate friend, my beloved brother. I call him the psalmist. Bulu Sanzaku has always been a beloved friend and brother. I've known him since from secondary school. It amazes me to see how much God has been using him to advance the kingdom of God and also be able to be an effective contributor to the development of the body of Christ and also to the advancement of the kingdom of God at large. The body of Christ in itself is an effective body that can never be developed sufficiently enough functional units that are more like missionaries where which he can heral. God in himself dwells in a dimension that is all by himself God enough that he needs he only created beings and humankind in their insufficiency, inability to be able to ensure that they come into the rest as a result of that. How much more mankind advance in life is in the degree to which they yield to God that he may be obeyed and updated. One of the ways that God upgrades mankind into the dimension of himself is by sending men that he has helped. Functionaries and missionaries of change that will also become the arrow head where which he can further build ladders and blocks in the heart of men and release sufficient impartations upon their spirit that this may become a superstructure that they can have reality and truth they may be built alive to represent him and act like him function like him upon the face of the earth as a result of that i believe that we are just but contributors we are just but effective part of the joint that supply the strength of God to the degree to which we have been supplied by heaven, to the degree to which we have been ministered by God. No man take upon himself this honor, even him who is called as a high priest, to only require many, many more dependency upon the spirit of truth for you to become relevant even in advancing the kingdom of God. A man can never help God. We don't do this in a bit to help God. We do this as part of our kingdom responsibility. We do this as part of our sonship responsibility. And we see this as a privilege to partner together with the trial. And we can bring men into the realm of God. And bring men into the full functionality of that which Christ Jesus has paid for. As a result of that today. And I believe tomorrow also we shall be considering an area in the prophetic where which we can have proper understanding into the dealings of God and his operation upon the face of the earth. I need your heart to be open. I need your heart to be receptive. Whatever thing that I will be saying may do you no good if your heart is not open enough unto God. Man may not be able to help you, but God himself can. That is why he sent his spirit, no matter how good a man is, he may still have to align with the spirit of God to help mankind. Because no man can help a man if he is not helped by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God being the component that man aligned to is actually the ingredient where would God use to change the lives of men. As a result of that, man cannot boast in his ability to be able to represent God. But in his how much more he is, he is insufficient and God help him. Then in turn, he also be able to communicate God unto others so that the same God can be able to help others as the God help him. It still remain a mystery how God helped men. But I assure you, the mysterious mystery where with God helped men is nothing but by the supply of the agency of his spirit. And as many that cannot be aligned to the spirit of God and be led by the spirit of God, we continually find the help and the strength of God. As a result of that, I trust that today you shall open your heart to perceive what the Lord has to say beyond my speakings and beyond my words. Facet, I have actually just come back from a meeting so i'm a little bit tired but i assure you that truth we can be able to communicate more better and i trust god that at the end maybe there will be time for questioning so that you can also further understand better okay the truth is this god is a prophetic god god is the artistic design of the entire of creation god in himself is the designer of creation, is the designer of mankind. And mankind being one of the special artistic creatures that God has created, 
has complicated his life why simply because mankind has not aligned to the order of divinity as vast as complicated mankind can be the god that created mankind was never designed that mankind become that complicated just that because of our lack of alignment to the template of our creation is what has granted unto us the misalignment and the disalignment where which we cannot be able to perceive the dealings of god and the operations of god in times and season and because of that deficiency we somehow empower darkness and empower the devil so much plague upon our ignorance and unknowingly to us we continue to advance the kingdom of darkness and become so disobedient to the heavenly callings because we are not guided aright by the prophetic as a result of that we must understand that good as it is that a believer has become born again a believer may never be able to advance upon the face of the earth if he doesn't understand the prophetic dealings of god with him over time and the only way a believer understand the prophetic dealings of god with him over time is via understanding the ways and the patterns of the prophetic a man that neglects the area and the operation of god prophetically will always lose guardianship the prophetic is guardianship the prophetic is the arrowhead the prophetic is the road map the prophetic is the compass where would god thrive upon the face of the earth god can never be able to advance us as a people until he move prophetically no wonder the bible said that by a prophet the lord god delivered the children of israel and it is by a prophet that he preserved them the preservation of the people by a prophet is through the agency of the prophetic everything that you see displayed in scripture is a prophetic blueprint of the workings of god over time everything that you see established via doctrine was the prophetic alignment and the workings of men perceiving the move of god as much as doing their best giving life unto the cause and ensuring that everything that god communicated unto them was well documented was well adhered unto and was well aligned unto that was prophetic operations at work and every man that worked with god that advanced in life understand the prophetic speakings of god and further also understand the prophetic establishment establishment of god and his manifestation over time as such you will be so limited as a believer if you don't understand the prophetic and how it works all what you know is doctrine the doctrinal exegesis and uh, the, the, the the strength of theology that you have acquired over time good as that may be maybe your demise maybe your inability to be able to advance within the corridor of the eye vista of the eagle eye that see afar and of the strength of the ox that balance itself before you take a flight you know in the realm of the spirit ox fly in the realm of the spirit everything take advantage of the dimension of the wings of the spirit because in the realm of the spirit everything is giving wings the wings of the spirit is the advancement of the prophetic and the prophetic deals with how much more god gives you guardianship how much more god gives you eyes how much more god gives you perception how much more god gives you intuition as such in the realm of the spirit everything is giving everything is more like a wind and the movement of the wind of the spirit what is called a prophetic establishment i believe that we are called as a prophetic people to be apostolic in function what do i mean by that the truth is this god began prophetically then he established doctrine apostolically every move of god is herald prophetically and every move of god is sustained prophetically and apostolically but to herald the move of god it must be prophetic every instruction that god gives to mankind is prophetic because the ability of a man to perceive the voice of god the speakings of god the ability of a man to be able to align with the dealings of god is prophetic the ability of a man to inscribe and to scrap out every laws every principle every laid down patterns of god is prophetic for a man to understand the ways of god it will require a prophetic insight and a prophetic understanding and prophetic intelligence for the man to be able to understand the ways of god because the ways of god are hidden in types and shadow 
it will require men and women that understand the establishment of the prophetic in its types and in its shadows in how much more it is hidden in dark places for the man to be able to decipher and that is why i let you understand that in the realm of the spirit everything is giving wings to fly as a result of that words in the spirit are alive and because of the way they are living they can fly because everything in the realm of the spirit carry actually a wind that fly and the dimension of the wind that flies there is nothing but the dimension of the prophetic because the prophetic gives speed the prophetic give guidance the prophetic give vision the prophetic also give direction and for the body of Christ to understand where they are, they must embrace everything that has to do with the prophetic. Even the doctrinal strength of Christianity can only be advanced and implemented by prophetic instruction, by prophetic insight. So we must be able to understand according to times and seasons, what has the Lord spoken before? Where are we now as a people and where are we going to? No wonder the scripture began prophetically and ended prophetically. The book of Genesis was actually a prophetic insight into everything that God was doing, into every account of creation, giving to a prophet so that he cannot be able to establish it as a doctrine. Then, at the tail end of the scripture, the scripture can never be ended until an apostolic prophetic individual, John, was banished into the island of Patmos. Why? So that he can have another further understanding into where the church is going to in the next age and get to understand to the church where the church is presently is and where the church was in time past. All himself is handicapped except with men and women that understand his prophetic speaking. Until Moses arise, God cannot begin to begin to document the scripture. Until Moses arise, it was impossible for the scripture to be put in place. Why? Because all the speakings of God need to be captured by a prophetic man for God to find expression. The prophetic defines God. The prophetic gives expression to God. It is the prophetic that defines the doctrine where the apostolic receive. No wonder. And let you understand that we are called as a prophetic people to be apostolic in function. Shababala to tebrete kabau zalaba be lata vura tam betu zafato babala shat katia lata. The impartations will come by the speakings of my words. I begin to sense strange presence of angelic beings, feel strange presence of the Holy Spirit. The impartation is already ongoing, and your ordination is already steadfast. I need you to understand that. God himself is handicapped with it without prophetic establishment. It is impossible for God to advance the kingdom without the alignment of prophetic individuals. And it is impossible for prophetic individuals to be aligned until God in himself make them prophetic in his own nature. Because the prophetic in itself is a DNA encoded in God. The prophetic is the patterns of God hidden in types and shadow. It will require the prophetic to understand God. No wonder like I let you understand that God is hidden. It will require prophetic individual to decipher it. The Bible said that God in himself conceal a matter. It is the glory of his prophet to search things out. It is the glory of them that he has ordained for them to search things out. The hidden of God is actually the prophetic because it will require the seeing eye and the hearing ear for a man to be able to perceive. And the prophetic in himself encompasses the seeing and the hearing, the intuition and the perception. It will require a combination of these modus and these parameters for a man to be able to understand who God is. Men combine this Vices are them that understand who God is and they operate alike. And like I let you understand that good as God is, everything that God did was concealed in creation. It would require Moses, a prophet, that rise. And immediately when Moses rise, he was given access into time past, into time present, and into time future and to come. And immediately afterward, everything we begin to see through scripture was written by prophetic understanding. How men begin to decipher the operation of spirit. How the spirit of God begin to highlight upon the lives of To begin to give them better understanding into creation. Into God himself. Mind you, even Jesus himself came as a fulfillment of prophecy. And I let you understand that the prophetic speak about everything that constitutes a prophet. And also prophecy. 
because prophecy is a divine inspiration spoken by the agency of the spirit of god it will require a divine hand a divine inspiration and when i talk about divine inspiration anything divine is something that comes from above so prophecy is actually the utterances given by men aided by the spirit of god to communicate the counsel of god upon the face of the earth and prophets are these missionaries which are giving access to prophecy that they may be able to declare it upon the face of the earth this one are more like the custodians of prophecy this one are more like the wombs and the incubators of prophecy this one are more like them that are pregnant with the will and the counsel of god when you speak about the prophetic my friends you speak about that which relates to prophecy and to a prophet and prophets is everything that is aided by the spirit of god by a divine inspiration by a divine enablement that man can be able to declare the counsel of god everything declared upon the inspiration of the spirit of god became prophecy no wonder the bible says, holy men we are moved by the spirit as they document the scripture he said men we are moved by the spirit they were inspired by the spirit of god and they document all the books in the bible as you see it was a prophetic movement of people as helped by god that granted them the privilege and the advantage to be able to establish who god is through scripture and today you read and that was not enough because they opened a window and a portal in the heavens so that as you begin to read in time the speakings of god then the prophetic opened unto you another gateway in the spirit that you can grant access into the operations of god my brothers the prophetic is our way of survival in the kingdom it will require a man that understands the prophetic for him to be able to gain access, gain ascendancy, gain penetration into heaven. The only way you can penetrate heaven, my friends, is not by too much words, but it will it is it is true words that are guided by the spirit of god it is true world that are inspired by the spirit of god and that has already switched into prophecy no wonder there are many more times you take the word of god and you begin to declare them as unto prophecy the bible says you have a more sure word of prophecy according to the operation of god the writings of the word of god is actually a sure word of prophecy it was the word of prophecy it was word spoken by men by divine inspiration so it's called the sure word of prophecy when you look out through the scripture, you will discover from Isaiah to Jeremiah to the psalmist himself to everything that was done through scripture. In fact, you can go down from Abraham to Isaac unto Jacob to all the patriarchs of old. All of them we are individuals that understand the prophetic speakings of God. When God began with Abraham, Abraham said, Overnight, I had the voice of a stranger spoken to me. And he said, leave your father's house unto a land that i will show thee abraham had no understanding of who god is no one at the bible called him the father of him because he just had a voice the bible said abraham believed god and it was counted unto him as righteousness all of a sudden he woke up one day and told his father that i had a voice i have never seen this god i have never seen him but i just know within my spirit i had a voice of a man that was speaking unto me but this was not just a normal man or an idol but it was the voice of elohim he spoke unto me he said leave your father's house the father asked him he said who is this person where did you mean he said i don't know him but he's an adonai he's a master that was a man that understand the prophetic speakings of god abraham will be handicapped at least without the prophetic because it requires an hearing here a hearing here for him to be able to perceive that it was god talking as good as god is as powerful as god is it is impossible for god to communicate with abraham until he tapped into the establishment of the prophetic then he began to speak unto abraham abraham may be an idol worshiper it doesn't matter as long as the prophetic was engaged an idol worshiper became a man that hid unto divine inspiration the opposite of prophecy is who saying so saying is your ability to you to a to to a strange spirit to divine they call them diviners so saying is your ability to you to a false spirit to begin to divine it got onto you an inspiration but from demonic darkness from potters and the astral i assure you prior before i um, began to perceive the voice of god they have been hearing the voice of an idol but immediately immediately and the voice of the spirit begin to breathe upon abraham abraham perceived immediately when he perceived he told his father i have to leave 
I have to leave you. There is a God that called unto me. Abraham went through all kinds of rigor just so that he can be able to obey the instruction that comes from the God of Zion. And he continued. One of the things that the God did to him was he began to lead him and guide him. I told you that the prophetic is guidership. The guidership of the prophetic ensured that Abraham was not lost. Because any man that follow God in the spirit via the prophetic establishment, he will never be lost. Because prophetic establishment speak about every prophetic tool required to guide you in the prophetic. It speak about dreams, visions. It speak about trance. It speak about daydreaming. It speak about all the intuition and the perception that comes with visions and everything that relate to prophecy. Your ability to be granted access into revelation, to be able to know that this is the speakings of God. This is the speaking of a God. That when a voice turned direct, you know that this was the voice of a God. Prophetic establishment speak about all the necessary supply that can be done by an angel to ensure that you are guided aright. That even when you are not saying an angel appear and tell you that by the order of the Lord, that when you have come to a crossroad and you don't know where to go, I appear. Why? Because in the prophetic, no one is supposed to be lost. My friends, God himself can never advance his kingdom except the prophetic is put in. No one that we saw that he required the prophetic for Isaac to be born. He required the prophetic for Jacob to be born. He required the prophetic for, for, for Joseph and all, for all the children of Jacob. It required the prophetic for them to be bettered. Every guidance that was given in scripture was by prophetic establishment. And immediately afterward, you cannot further see what happened. When Jacob gave birth to his children, in the book of Genesis 49, he said, Gather you, my children, that I may tell you what will befall of you. Jacob began to give them download of impartation of who they are in God. And now that they were not born by mystic, although they were born by different mothers, but according to the order of the Spirit, they were prophetically placed aright. That by the time you are able to decipher the dot, you will realize. That there is a placement made for each and every one within a tribe, within a clan in the spirit that they may never understand if they follow that in the flesh. And they begin to define to each and every one of them their heritage and their blessings in the Lord. He said, The scepter will not depart from Judah, and that the Lord give her from within his feet until Shiloh will come. He begin to speak about Reuben and how that is the excellency of the strength of the Father. But as unstable as water, he has defied the court of the Father, and he will not excel. He began to speak about Levi. He began to he began to speak about the ordination of each tribe, and whatsoever he speak about the tribe, he becomes. But do you understand that before each and every one of them became anything, they were first of all an impactation upon the borders of Abraham. Now, when God promised, promised Abraham prophetically. That to his own seed and his seed seed. You know, the seed of Abraham was actually Jesus. But mind you, let me tell you the truth. Before Jesus Christ was born, born from the tribe of Jesse, there unto David, do you realize that until the predecessor or until the father's father's fathers of Jesse and David were born, Jesus would not be born. Because when you connect the genealogy, it was prophetically put aright. No wonder when you read the book of Numbers, they begin to number prophetically the workings of God over time. How this one is connected to this one. Why? Because this was how God joined you over time. The prophet is guidance, my friends. The prophet is guidance. So you must understand that in the bowels of Abraham, all the tribes were hidden. But these were prophetically defined according to each and every heritage. According to each and every tribe, with their functionality in the spirit, it was defined. But he didn't Abraham. When he joined to Isaac, joined to Jacob, then it was better. But mind you, they were just born like a seed, and they begin to be born. And these guys were born as normal individuals. Normal individuals become a tribe, become a clan, become a family, become a nation, become a people, and they became immortal. And when you read the book of Revelation, immediately when, when John began to have an understanding of the New Jerusalem, he said that the New Jerusalem is going to be built upon the foundation of the apostolic and the prophetic. How that the twelve foundation is going to be apostolically, but the gate is actually going to be prophetic. The prophetic definition of the gate 
is going to be the access route where which all the tribes are infused and that's to tell you that prophetically that what god was doing with abraham unto isaac unto jacob was actually to establish the new jerusalem that will come in over time and that is to say that the 12 tribes of israel are not dead neither are the apostles dead because their witness still speaks in now what do you think will make their witness still speak to now unless the spirit of the prophet is at work and that's why today you will still have caleb you still have joshua today you will still have apostle paul you still have apostle philip you still have apostle march you still have all the other apostles has been established why because the prophetic definition of their establishment in the spirit is still speaking no wonder they still haunt you in their encounters no wonder they still appear to you you your name may be esther but actually in the realm of the spirit you are deborah your name may be may, may, your name your name may be Emeka, but in the realm of the spirit you are poor your name will be Emmanuel, but in the realm of the spirit you are peter why because of the immortalization of the prophetic definition of god it was granted access in the realm of the spirit that in the establishment men partake of the impartation of the guidance of the spirit of god and begin to function in the spirit alight. the prophetic is guidance my friends and that's the reason why today the kingdom of god continues to advance because the pro- prophetic people live and die and they are immortalized and their spirit began to continue to speak as cloud of witness but prophetic in that definition coming to you in vision and in dream and in impartation putting upon you different dimension of god to ensure that in partnering with the spirit of god you come into an order in the spirit and represent god all right i thought you see that god himself will continue to be handicapped until the end of time and even in the end of time god himself can never build until the gate of the prophetic are there the tribe in the spirit are there and apostolic establishment are there god began prophetic and apostolically and as a result of that he will maintain it as such any man that neglects the prophetic speakings of god i assure you may never be able to advance in the kingdom the prophetic give us insight give us eyesight give us foresight the prophetic let us to understand where we are going to be in the next 10 years mind you before corona came many were prophesying we are prophesied in fact, people were saying 2020 will be a year of whatever. Check my prophecy. The first day I was born on Christmas Day 25th. Many more times when I dwell with God, I give out prophecy. One of the things I write, I say 2020 is going to be an unprecedented year. It will be a year of gloominess and darkness unto many other people. Because many people will be lost. It's going to be a year where the way we used to see God is not going to be as usual again. Because this year is going to be unprecedented. The way we used to see God, the way we used to find God, the patterns where which we follow to encounter God, the encountering men is going to change. It is not going to be taught as usual again, 2020, because a shift is coming in the spirit, not shifting unto abundance unto others, shifting unto perish unto others. And we have seen this and we have depicted. If you truly, truly follow God, you have an understanding of season and time. You will not backslide because the season changed. Now that you align because the season changed. Because when a man begins to follow God prophetically, he doesn't backslide, he aligns. When you are supposed to backslide, you align because the spirit and the timings of God are supposed to favor you. No one the Bible says when they say there is a casting that you say there is a lifting up. I don't know about you, but I grow more spiritually within the season of drought. Why? Because I align with the order of the Spirit. The Bible said that God will do nothing surely except he reveal his secret to his servant, the prophet. The prophetic is guidance. God is handicapped with that prophet. I need you to understand that. And whether you like it or not, God will never do anything except he reveal his secret unto his servant, the prophet. The servant, the prophet there does not mean a man called to function as a prophet in an office no it means anyone that is in accurate alignment with god in season and in time at that time he become a prophet why prophetic speak about prophecy and the function of a prophet how that prophecy is a divine inspiration how that a man aligning with the spirit of god and communicate the counsel of god now for the moment anybody can be a prophet according to the definition of god not called into the office of the prophet but called to function in the prophetic because the prophet is speak about prophecy first then the prophet there is that placement of the prophet where a man they are working in the spirit school in the spirit his grandest structural impartation coming to a level where which is giving access and giving a throne in the spirit to begin to function as a prophet in other words there are men that have been able to align themselves to partake for a moment 
upon the divine inspiration of God and function as likewise. Like I said, that you must be able to understand that surely everything you, do, you see through scripture was actually fulfilling the prophecy. No wonder the Jewish people will always, always, anytime you do anything, they will ask which prophecy is fulfilled because every prophecy is already laid down. What they need now is fulfillment of prophecy. So when Jesus Christ was born, they check which prophecy is fulfilled. When Joseph was born, which prophecy is fulfilled. When Isaac is born, which prophecy because an angel prophesied. An angel said that your wife will give birth to a child. Every time something happened, they check which prophecy was because God guided them through the prophetic. The prophetic was their arrowhead. The prophetic was their, was their hood map. Till today is still remain as such. And that's why I told that we are called as a prophetic people to be apostolic in function. Anytime God must advance for the most prophetically. No wonder, if you read the book of Hebrews chapter 1, in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God, who has sundress time and in diverse manner, spoke unto our forefathers by the prophet. He has in this, in this last day choose to speak to us through his son, who he has made hell of all things, holding everything by the word of his power. I want you to understand that truly, all through in time past, God speak prophetically. That's why every prophet in scripture prophesied. What are they prophesying? They prophesied the captivity of Israel. But mind you, before it was prophesied, Abraham actually dreamt and saw that his generation would actually be in Egypt in, in captivity for four hundred years. So all of those things were actually the speakings of God over time. Every prophet speak about the coming of the Messiah. Even the Pharisee and the Sadducees, they read about it. But just because their heart is not malleable and doctored enough, they saw of it and they could not embrace it. And that's why we must not have to be like a generation of Pharisees and Sadducees, where we neglect the operation of God and neglect the prophetic. And we focus upon soothsaying, speak things that people will want. Let me tell you the truth. A true prophet is zealous for the things of God. A true prophet is seeking to establish the throne of God wherever he finds himself. I need to understand that a prophet is a man that hears God and speak the mind of God unto people and also take the petition of people unto God. So a prophet is a man that will stand and tell the Lord, Father, I stand as a mediator and I speak unto you on behalf of these people. This is their request. Grant it unto them. The prophet is also a man that will hear from God and say, O ye people of the land, thus says the Lord, and you are demanded to abide by the speakers of the Lord. But a prophet is also given territorial authority. A prophet is given right in the spirit to control a territory. Every prophet is given a territory to influence. Every prophet is given a territory to control. Every prophet is given a region of dominance. A teacher may be in a region and be okay. And share, he will share, he will share house with Babalao. A prophet will never do that because a prophet seeks to establish the throne of God in every region. So if if a prophet is in a house and his neighbor is a Babalao, he will seek to close down every altar of the Babalao. Why? Because two God cannot place. A prophet represents God and he ensures that at every time God is establishing it, it's impossible for the altar of Baal to be there. And the altar of God to be there. When the throne of God comes, judgment comes. When the throne of God comes, contention comes. Because the throne of God is actually the prophetic establishment of God, finding expression within a region. Habitated within God, stand upon a place, it activates possibilities in the spirit. The establishment of the speakers of God is done by the prophetic. And the only way, the only way, that the speakers of God can be captured into doctrine is by prophetic people. No wonder. The Bible is speaking in the book of Acts 23. He said, in a certain church in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. The only people that perceive the speakings of the Holy Spirit then, if you are an apostle, you must be able to be a prophetic alignment to be able to perceive the speakings of God. And by the time you perceive the speakings of God, that is prophetically. You just share an evangelist you can become a prophetic evangelist coming to a point where when you go into the field for evangelism when you go i love william braham william braham will come to you and tell you if i tell you the things of your heart 
Will you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord? If you say yes, say you are not from here, you are actually from Colorado. You stay in Light Spring Street in Colorado. You have three daughters. Your name is this, your name is that. Will you now give your life to Jesus Christ? Of course, first he will give his life to Jesus Christ. Why? Because he used the prophetic to bring men into, into the Lord Jesus. Let me tell you the truth. The prophetic itself can help an evangelist. The prophetic itself can help a pastor. As a pastor, you are in church. You may be a pastor. People come to you for counseling. No need wasting too many, two hours, three hours. Open your mouth and tell them, I, before you come, this is what I perceive, this and this and this. People have come to me several times. Immediately when they come, I begin to speak. I don't even know what I'm saying. But I know that by prophetic guidance, I'm giving unto them guidance, I'm giving unto them counsel. Because the counsel of God comes to a man that is alive. For you to be able to, part, to partake of the counsel of God, you must have stand within the counsel of God. And the only way for a man to stand within the counsel of God is only a man. That understand the prophetic because the counsel of God is within the throne of God, the counsel of God, and until a man is given access, 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 access into the throne of God, he will never be able to partake of the counsel of God. That is why many of you have been summoned in the spirit, many of you have been called in the spirit. You can be sleeping suddenly, they wake you up. An angel will wake you up and bring you into a place made in the spirit. You will see elders, you will see council sitting, you will see people see that you look as though you are in a court. Many more times the deliberation is done within the throne of God. Every of those things are prophetic. It is within those places that the destiny of men are decided. The prophetic is guidance, my friends. It is the prophetic that leads people into the right, the way onto destiny. The man without the prophetic is a blind man. The Bible says without vision, the people perish. The prophetic is required. We take all true scriptures from the speakings of God and everything it was done. God the prophet the scriptures. They were just giving air to the possibility of the spirit of understand. And God has also called you to be prophetic in function. Prophetic individuals understand not just only the prophetic, but they also understand priesthood. The prophetic constitutes your priestly right. Because a true prophet will come to a point where he will be given access not just only to become a prophet but also to become a priest because you need to function in priesthood to ensure that not just only because when you ask people that are disobedient what you need they may not necessarily be a prophet but a priest because a priest does not care in the obedience of the people a priest is the one that paid the sacrifice for the lamb a prophet what the lord demand of them to do a prophet can come and say okay my people don't say the spirit of the lord that you must have to fast but a priest we stand and ask, O oh Lord God of heaven, what shall I do for you to visit the land? The Lord will say, Oh, my priest, we need to offer a sacrifice of 15 days of prayer and fasting. Immediately when you are done with 15 days of prayer and fasting, suddenly I will visit the land. So as a priest, you don't need to even go and meet the people and tell them anything. You will stand on your own and begin to offer prayer and fasting for 15 days. After 15 days, a revival will break out in the land. And they wonder, how did it happen? Because they didn't pray. They were still in their iniquity. But what they didn't understand was that a priest stood their priesthood. And he offered the sacrifice required unto God. And God had come unto it. That is the order of, my, of the Spirit, my friends. And how can a priest be able to perceive this? It will require the prophetic. How did God communicate to a priest? It will require the prophetic. How did you get to an apostle? It will require the prophetic. How did you know you are called? It will require the prophetic. The callings of God, everything requires the prophetic. That is why we are called as apostolic and prophetic people. God ensure that prophetically, prophetically we are called. Then we are apostolically in our function. God must visit your territory. He will require to walk upon the wings of prophetic people. And all these speakers will now be captured by prophetic people to establish apostolic blueprint. Every writings of God was prophetically downloaded, then established apostolically. No wonder. Part of also the responsibility of a priest. Many more times it will require for him to offer a kind of sacrifice. Other times he will require a kind of obedience. That is why God can appear unto Isaiah. And say, Isaiah, I want you to walk naked. Walk naked, walk naked. You see, the walking naked is nothing. It was a demand of priesthood. It was for the people of the land. So God can appear unto Ezekiel and say, Ezekiel, I want you to sleep like this for one day. Sleep by one side of the bed for 14 days. Sleep by one side of the bed is actually a year. And that represents the captivity of Israel. All of those things are prophetic. And that is priesthood. So Ezekiel will keep doing that. The land does not have to do it, but as he's doing it as he's done. 
something will happen to the land. Daniel stood in Babylon, continued to offer the demand sacrifice of a priest. And suddenly, God began to ensure that till the end, Nebuchadnezzar bowed, Darius bowed, Belshazzar bowed, all of them continued to bow. Not because they were holy and righteous people, but because a priest stepped into the land, not just a prophet. But how did a priest perceive the orders of God? It required priesthood. It is via the prophetic that you can understand what kind of sacrifice to offer for your family to be saved. What kind of sacrifice to offer for you to get that husband? What kind of sacrifice to offer for you to get that wife? What kind of thing for you to do for you to get that admission? What do you have to do for you to pass that exam? It will require the prophetic. It may not be written in doctrine. Anything that is not captured within doctrine will require the prophetic for you to be around. And that's why today there are many things not captured within doctrine. You must be able to journey through the eye of the prophetic for you to see in the order of the spirit. But how do a man journey through the eye of the prophetic? It will require the man that understands the ways of the spirit. Because the ways of the spirit are hidden in types and shadows. They are prophetic deputation for a man to be able to understand and comprehend. And we are called as a prophetic people to be apostolic to function. You must understand your prophetic DNA in God and understand your apostolic establishment in God and how you download prophetically, establish it in ground apostolically and begin to arrive. That's why today, God may be handicapped in your region. God may not function in your family until he find a man, a woman that is prophetic. No one that Deborah was a prophet. Esther was a prophet. All of them function in the prophetic. No one that down here. No one, everybody that God has ever worked with, go and check. They were prophetic people. They understand the order of the prophetic. I trust God that tomorrow I will be able to give you a better perspective. And how that you do not need to be called a prophet for you to function in the prophetic, I assure you. You don't need to become a you can you bad. Even if you have a bad now, God can borrow you for 15 minutes to speak the counsel of God. Do you know that in the scripture, goat prophesy? In the scripture, fowl speak the word of God. In the scripture, donkey talk unto Bala. In the scripture, all kinds of things. In fact, Jesus said he will even rest raise stone to do the works of God. You are more than a goat, you are more than a fowl, you are more than a donkey. You can become an emissary of change within your region. If only you understand the way the prophetic works, my brother. Even the cushion in your room can talk to you. Even the chicken in your house can talk to you. Even the leaves around you can talk to you. Even things that look dead can actually speak to you. And I assure you, the prophetic has the ability to give life to anything. When a man understands the prophetic speakings of God, and understands the prophetic establishment of God, the throne of God is established within his visibility. And suddenly everything around him begins to find life and begin to find expression according to God. It will require the prophetic for a man to understand the operation of the angelics. It will require the prophetic for you to know how to even relate with anything. Many people cannot relate with God because they don't understand the prophetic. Many people cannot relate with angels because they don't understand the prophetic. Many people cannot even relate with people because they don't, they don't even understand the prophetic. Because it will require you to understand the prophetic to be able to relate with people. People are prophetic. I assure you the truth. The spiritual nature of people is prophetic. Let me tell you. Let me tell you one funny thing you don't know. Many doctrinal things don't work. Do you understand? Many doctrinal things don't work. Why? Because everything looks different. Truth that you see can be perceived in different ways. The truth is one, which is Jesus. Eh? But let me tell you the truth. Jesus prophetically can become anything and anytime. And that is why today in heaven, when the 24 elders look upon him, they see a new thing. They look again, they see a new thing. They look again, they see a new thing. They look again, they see a new thing. Why? The reason why they will continue to see is because encoded within the personality of God is prophetic. Encoded within God is volumes of books, is scrolls and archives, traveling through eons of generations. The truth is it will not be able to be deciphered at all costs. There are many things in God that are still sealed to today. Books are sealed. And that's why you see different books have been given prophetically to as many that can be able to decipher them. It is the glory of God to conceal the matter. And for his genuine ones to search it out. And that is why God continues to seal things. 
even in the book of Revelation, John was able to give us understanding that God himself see the revelation of Jesus. And that's it. Everything you think you know about Jesus was still seen. The Jesus they think they know was still seen. So the Jesus that was revealed was part of the little unrolling of the coding of the DNA of who he was. No wonder. When he was revealed as light unto Moses, he saw that in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was born. And God said, Let there be light. He revealed Jesus. And by the time he went further, it took many years again when John had an encounter with Jesus. When he began to write his story of the beginning, he said, In the beginning was the world, and the world was with God, and the world was God. I begin to went down to let us understand. The actually the personality that we thought was light that was revealed in Genesis was actually the personality named the Christ. So the way Moses perceived the truth was different from the way that John perceived the truth. Why? Because according to prophetic establishment, the truth can be given us access through diverse possibilities. No wonder. Paul says something. He said the grace of God that was at work in Peter. To become an apostle unto the Jews. In the same grace that was at work in me to make an apostle unto the Gentile. Prophetically, according to the definition of our DNA in God, you are wired as an apostle unto the Jews. I'm wired as an apostle unto the Gentiles. And as much as you try as possible to be able to communicate truth unto the Gentiles, you may never be able to get it right. It will require me as Paul to speak the truth of the truth of God unto the Gentiles. Why? according to the prophetic definition not that you may not be able to unravel it much more but i will do it better because of the impartation that was established via the establishment i need us to also further understand that the office of the prophet is probably the least understood and the most neglected ministry office in the church today and as i wrote to you right now that if we refuse to receive an apostle we refuse order that's true However, if we refuse to receive a prophet, we will refuse our destiny. From everything I let you understand now, you know that the, our destiny is hinged upon the prophetic. And let, no wonder your destiny looks so seen. People find it very hard when we talk about destiny. Why? These things will require the eye of the prophetic. It will require the establishment of the prophetic for it to be unravelled. Nothing in doctrine may give you full understanding. No wonder every man that ever told you fulfilled destiny have a prophetic encounter, understand the prophetic, have a vision, have a dream. There is something that guides them beyond just what they read. It's not because they read it anywhere. There are journeys that need to be taken in the spirit for you to be able to understand the encoding of your destiny. This thing is a placement in God and it will continue to find expression. As a result of that, you must also be able to understand that I wrote here, I said, where there is no destiny, there is no future. Then the church then becomes relegated to a narrow existence of the here and the now. The prophet is the key to the church destiny and power. The church today needs to recognize and receive the ministry of the prophet and to pray that God himself will raise those with the prophetic gifting into their proper prophetic office. Those who hold the office of the prophet from a charismatic order to which a recognized position should be given in the church. Especially, especially um, I said, yeah, recognize what I'm giving an especially recognition and authoritative status should be confirmed upon those who have manifested certain gifts in a prominent and on a continual manner. You know, many more times, if you look at our churches today, they neglect people that are prophetic. Anytime you begin to see, anytime you begin to hear, anytime you come with any guidance, you are cast away. Why? Because people seek not to be able to understand. And that is why the church may never be able to advance because we are neglecting the office of a prophet. We are neglecting the prophetic. We are neglecting the functionality of the prophet. 
and we'll continue to neglect that as a church, as a people, we may not be able to advance. And that is what I'm trying to let us understand here. That we must be able to embrace this functionality and take them with heart. The prophet is the Lord's instrument, one of the several means by which Jesus Christ leads his church. In the power of the Spirit, the prophet manifests the character of the Lord, who is the prophet on the end time. So when the prophet is recognized and comes into his office, he brings with him an authority from God and accomplishes two things in the church. First of all, the prophet in himself it helps us to realize that God is a God of the now. It will only require a prophet for you to know that God is now. Anytime you find yourself let people know that God is here, God is now, what you are speaking is guidance. What you are speaking is that God is still alive. The prophet is one that is always reminding us that God is, not that God was. He tells us what God is doing, not just what God has done. Knowing what God has done throughout history is important, but it is also powerful, a legacy for us to be able to know where God is taking us to. However, we also need that the God of the Bible is also the God of today. It will only require the prophet to bring us to that understanding. That is why we also have to know that the God who blesses Moses, help David, and anointed Jesus will also bless, help, and anoint us. Our God is a known God, right? And the prophet help us to remember that God is a known God. Very, very important. Further, I also let us to understand something very important here. The prophets are not called to be right with men. Many more times as a genuine prophet, you will not always be right with men, but you will be right with God. Why? Because many more times, the only way that you can be right with God as a prophet, the only time that you can be right with God as a prophet is when you align with God. If you don't align with God, there's every chance that you're aligning with men. Every chance that you're aligning with men. And it's very, very important for us to also be able to know that a prophet is one that holds daily to the instructions of God and declare the counsel of God even unto them. Many prophets die over time. Why? Because of their conviction, because of their proclamation of faith. They believe even unto them. If you look at the book of Isaiah 20, the prophet speaks about the emphasis of how God told him to walk naked. The issue was not that he was naked. No. The issue was that he needed to obey God even unto them. So it doesn't matter whether his family understand. They don't really have to understand. But his obedience to God was a pivotal thing that he would never be able to sell for nothing. Very, very important. Then, we also have to be able to understand that most times as a nation, as a people, if you truly want to represent God in the prophetic, a lot of times, for you to be aligned with people, it means for you to be misaligned with God. And for you to align with God sometimes means for you to be misaligned with people. As such, you must hold daily to the instructions of God and continually, continually, continually be obedient unto God. When you look at the demand upon the prophet, the Bible said that God demanded of him to go and marry Goma. The issue was not that he is supposed to marry a prostitute, good as that may be. What do God want to do? But you realize that God was trying to communicate prophetically the destiny of Israel. That as he had not, they have gone away from him, but he's going to call them back again. So the marriage between a prophet and a harlot was actually a prophetic understanding of how God, the Lord is going to unite both the Gentile church and the Jewish church to make them to become one. Although this may be a castaway, Although this may be something that is not recognized within the covenant, truly he is sent unto the Lord to the lost house of Israel. But prophetically, it was designed that the Jews and the Gentiles come into oneness together. And the only way that God can do that is to begin to break through the barrier walls that have hindered the Jews and the Gentiles together. And that was why God must still have to reach on to Paul. Although the Jewish established Peter and all those Jewish apostles in the good way they were, God had to break through to reach out to the other ones. Lastly, I need to understand that by the time you look at the way that God incorporated the Gentile church, it was prophetically. It was almost impossible for the Gentile church to be incorporated. 
The first thing that happened was that God began to reach onto a man named Cornelius. Cornelius was a Gentile. Cornelius was never born again. I believe he didn't even know anything about God, but he subscribed onto prophetic and apostolic tool of prayer, fasting, and alms giving. Who told Cornelius to be giving alms? Who told Cornelius to be praying? And he was very devoted, praying and giving alms. And the Bible called him a captain of the Italian band. In this season and time, it is very hard for us to find soldiers that can be very, very anointed. Soldiers that can truly, truly represent God. But let me tell you the truth. Cornelius was a Gentile soldier. A Gentile soldier, you speak about a very carnal soldier. But the Bible said that he was praying on daily basis consistently. And he was giving arms. Those were prophetic apostolic tools. When you return back to the book of Acts of the Apostles, what the apostles say they would give themselves to was what Cornelius give them, themselves to. The apostles say they would give themselves to prayer. They would give themselves to study. They would give themselves to ministry. And that was what Cornelius unconsciously gave himself to. How did he give himself to those things? Who told him to do that? Just as I told you that Abraham was not trained by a righteous father. Abraham, his father was, was an idol worshiper, but by the prophetic definition of God, God ensured that he begin to move within the spirit and the heart and the conscience of Abraham and make other Abraham aligned to the prophetic. And Abraham began to follow God. He said, I do not know what was talking to me, but I know that a spirit is speaking to me in my heart. And he said, leave your father house. And that was the same thing that was applicable unto the man named Cornelius. Paraventure a spirit wake him one day and say, continue to pray, continue to fast, and also continue to give alms. And as he was doing that one day, an angel now appeared to him. I said, Cornelius, your prayer and your alms giving as I tell you, uh, as I send unto God as a memorial. Now, send for Peter, for he is in Joppa. And mind you, Peter never had an understanding of what Cornelius was doing. What God just did that time was that God just elevated Cornelius as an apostle, but apostle unto the Gentile. Because unconsciously, Cornelius was working the protocol model of the apostolic. And as he was doing that, it was the protocol of the anointing. And the Lord God slay him and causes an encounter. But of course, he needed the right hand fellowship of men. So they have to send for Peter. It was the prayer that Cornelius engaged that ensured that angel also appeared to Peter. And Peter was sent. And when Peter came, it was not normal for the Jews to have anything to do with the Gentiles. But because a man that understands the oppression of the prophetic stood within the gateway of heaven and began to subscribe to apostolic and prophetic tool of prayer and of fasting and giving arms, then suddenly God encountered him. Mind you, before this goes on to change the Gentiles, but how can God be able to change the Gentiles? The only way that God can change the Gentile nation is until they find a man that can believe in prophetic definition and walk according to the order of prophecy. Then he cannot be able to change the Gentile. When God found Cornelius as an apostle unto the Gentile, first of all, he ensured that he paid the sacrifice for the Gentile nature to be included. And when Peter came, Peter did not come and do any prayer and fasting. Immediately when Peter came to the house of Cornelius, he said, I don't even know why I'm here. But the same God that appeared to you appeared to me. And he began to let him understand what God has just been doing. And suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon them. The same way the apostles received the baptism of the Spirit in the upper room. Cornelius' house became an upper room. Cornelius' house became an apostolic and a prophetic hub where men were activated. Mind you, it was easier for those guys to pray because they were used to waiting upon the Lord. Although they were doing that in the flesh. But now, when the Spirit came, it poured upon them. What Peter just did was alignment. Peter came and stood in alignment. So that the Spirit can be brought upon, upon them. And suddenly, they began to pray in tongues. And afterward, that was how the Gentile church continued to advance. So prior, before Paul came in, Cornelius was effective. And afterward, Cornelius began to establish many of the churches you see that Paul went preaching. Many of those churches that Paul came to, do you realize that those places were church before Paul came? How was those church built? 
it means that they were actually Gentiles apostles that were existing before Paul came. Paul began to write right letters onto churches. What Paul brought to the churches were order. No wonder Paul was correcting many things in the church because many churches were established. When Paul met Timothy, he said, actually, I know of the faith of your mother and that of your grandmother. So there were many people, mind you, there are many people that if you check within the Gentile nature, that Paul get to meet them that know God. They may not know God too much, but they know God to a certain extent. So it was part of the apostolic working of a gentle apostle named Cornelius that the people that gather in the house of Cornelius that encounter God prophetically were the ones that spread the gospel over time. And that was how the body of Christ continued to build within the gentle nature into our line. Then Paul came and gave a better order and a better perspective. But do you understand that it is possible for us to lose everything that God is doing with us if we do not align continually prophetically? If you check all the churches in Antioch, all the churches in Antioch are now Islamic stronghold center. The temple in Jerusalem, everything was captured by Islam. Mind you, Damascus, where Paul himself encountered God, is now a place where Muslims were the ones that feel there. When you check all the churches in Antioch, all the Europe, all the places where Paul traveled to and did all kinds of things, right now, all of them are backslides. Some of them are onto idolatry. Why? Because the church refused to move prophetically. The church, the church calmed themselves around a doctrine. The church calmed themselves around a well-defined system of model of parody of seeking God. And as a result of that, today we are suffering. Let me tell you the truth. When Jesus Christ came upon the face of the earth, he went through synagogue casting out devil. But these were places where actually they were supposed to sustain the Lord. And that is why we still see today many churches begin very well later on they are backslidden why because there is no any move of the spirit that didn't begin prophetically but the time come when they cap themselves doctrinally cap themselves to a kind of modulo parandi cap themselves to a kind of way of doing things and because of those patterns established in the flesh today they are out of scope what am i trying to let you understand it is possible for you to go out of scope in the ordinances and the operations of God regarding your life and destiny if you refuse to follow the prophetic dealings of God. The prophetic dealings of God makes you current, make you stand in where God wants you to stand, make you go to where God wants you to go. And until you continue to follow God in the order of the prophetic, you may be out of scope. You may be where God used to be and not where God is now. The prophetic is what will tell you to bring you to where God is now. It was the prophetic that ensured that John the Beloved had to be at the island of Patmos. It was the prophetic that ensured that no matter how, John must be at the island of Patmos, banished to die so that he can have the book of Revelation. It was the prophetic that ensured that many things happened to the apostles, that the blood of the martyrs should become the seed for the gospel. It was the prophetic that guided them to wherever they go to. Do you realize that if we cut ourselves within a doctrine, Calm ourselves within a kind of operation. We may lose sight of where God is taking us or lose sight of where we are now. Check your life very well. The reason why you cannot perceive God is because you have neglected the prophetic. And you have lost sight of where God is, where God is taking you to, and where God was. Because the prophetic gives you access to what was, what is, and what is to come. I pray that tomorrow, you may be able to give a little bit perspective, a little order to what do the prophetic entails. I just give you an overview today of the operation of the prophetic. Tomorrow I should be able to be quite precise about what the prophetic entails and what are the prophetic establishment. What are the tools available prophetically to guide a believer? Because these things are clear, called divine in scriptures. And these things are clear called divine. If you follow the ways of the spirit, you will encounter the ways of the prophetic. And you will encounter the ways of guidership. You have access to the seeing eye and the hearing ear. And until a man has access to the seeing eye and the hearing ears, he may never, he may never, 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 never. A prophet may be blind physically, but he sees the spirit. A man that is prophetic understands the placement of his strength. You understand where his horn of authority is. You understand where the throne of his government is. You understand where he can be stirred up. You understand where he can be quickened. You understand the place of his own advantage. A man 
that understands the prophetic is a man that is aligned with God at every season. A man that understands the prophetic is a man that will always know how to receive strength from God at every season and every time. I need you to understand that God has called us again as a prophetic people to be apostolic in function. The reason why we must be apostolic in function is as I told you, that the prophetic download the mysteries of God, the apostles, apostolic put it in order, put it in shape, so that others can encounter it as a roadmap, as a gateway into the other prophetic appearance of God. And that is why you follow through an apostolic order as a foundation into the prophetic gateway that you have access unto life. But by the time a foundation is not built upon, a foundation is not built upon, a house cannot be built. The essence of God is to establish foundation so that a city is built by the building of a wall and the building of a gate. And what the prophetic and apostolic, apostolic do is that foundation is established, then a gate is built, then a wall is built, then a city is revealed. And the tools is what I intend for us to consider tomorrow. And I believe that if you have followed me for all this more than an hour session, you might have understand basically what the prophetic is and why we need the prophetic. Because God begins with it and God is going to end with it. From the very book of Genesis, it was a prophetic experience that Moses had, a prophetic encounter that Moses had, and it began to document that in the beginning, God created. He began to write the five books. And beyond that, it took prophetic speaking to continue. In the same way that at the tail end, God could not close anything until he encounter a prophetic apostle for him to also have an encounter and bring the book of Revelation so that he can tell us where the church will be marching to and where he's taking the church into. My brothers, we need the prophetic to guide us aright. Without the prophetic, we'll be blind as a people. Without the prophetic, we can never be able to advance. So can we pray, pray, just pray one minute and ask the Lord and see, oh God, thank you for today. We ask, oh God, that from today, as we sleep tonight, grant unto us encounters. Activate us in the prophetic. Let every necessary require impartation, necessary require structure in the spirit that will help us not to be blind in the spirit, that will give us guidance, that will give us direction. Come upon us by the spirit and by the power of the Lord. And I told you that the prophetic speak basically about how their prophecy and their the functioning of a prophet. You are divinely inspired by God to give guidance to a body of Christ and also lead and direct your life ahead. The prophetic become your compass. As the Lord has seen God, activate me unto the order of the prophetic. Forget about the first prophet you have upon the face. The reason why the first prophet tried is because genuine voices have not yet risen. Fighting them is a waste of time. If we are fighting them, it's because we have agreed that they are genuine enough. I assure you the truth. The only thing we need to do is simply to align with the order of God and ensure that there is no replacement to the genuity of a prophet in Israel. So is there not a prophet in Israel where we may consult? And anytime that they cannot find a prophet in Israel to consult, even a prophet himself, Saul was likened unto like a prophet in those times. Because he prophesied by the unction of the Spirit. As a result of that, he partook of the prophetic. So you know what it means to have a genuine grace to function in the prophetic. And when the Spirit of God was not there, he dazzled into the witch of Endom. He was the one that banished people not to go there, but he went there to inquire. Let me tell you the truth. If you don't have a genuine voice that speaks prophetically, if you don't have a genuine guideship in the prophetic, and there is no one that can guide you aright in life, sometimes you find yourself moving through the corridors of darkness, seeking whether you can find light. But the disease is this. Light can shine in darkness, but darkness has no rulership over light. It's almost impossible. So when you find people returning back to the corridors of darkness, seeking light is because they don't know what they are seeking for they have misplaced their priority you don't seek for darkness inside of light no it is inside of light inside of darkness that you shine light so i need you to understand that the only way the only solution to all the fake voices is when you and i rise in alignment to the throne of god and begin to give expression and, per- and perceptions and perspectives to all the speakings of God prophetically. In the time of Elijah, 
no false prophet was spared. Why? Because a man was genuinely functioning in the prophetic. In the time of the apostles, a divine arose, and all of them were silent. I needed to understand that the only way that we can function effectively upon the face of the earth and never be hindered as a church is only when we understand the prophetic definition of God. Good as it is for us to establish order, good as it is for us to establish doctrine, every doctrine was bettered from a prophetic encounter. Every doctrine was bettered from a prophetic establishment. So I need to understand that if we must advance, we must be able to shift again a little peck of our doctrine so that we can embrace the new because the prophetic is found in the new wine. The prophetic is found within the new context. The prophetic is found within the new impactation. The prophetic is found within the new definition. As a result of that, one of your prayer is that, Father, make me new again. Make me fresh again. Align me again to your current emphasis. Align me again to your current speaking. And I'm a portion of right in the name of Jesus. Zabibala tuna jabrata kubaka subrete kila baratu lete na bakwa sabrato kubalo tuno bakano zobrato kubalati lata bashka tate. As the Lord has said, O oh God, align me again. Fine tune me again in the spirit. Bring me a wife. Bazibala tu. Zabrati kabaratu lete na bakwa zabrato kubalati lata bakwa na bara lata bakwa shkali lata ba. Raba bashka tabe luta raba ndash kubrato kubaka tala baratu lete le baratu le kaskatia. Zabia la vula, bando lo bokos kebro to kobana tela babara to lekas kebro ya la babas kabara to lekas katiata. Thank you, Lord. For the want of time, I want to appreciate my friend and brother, Bulus Anza Kusisele speaking. Thank you so much. And for everyone that has connected, I trust that tomorrow we should be able to, I should be a little bit uh, soft and easy. And I pray that I was basic enough for everybody to understand. Okay. And I trust that I may be able to share some of uh, the materials the book so that you can be able to learn more further okay so thank you so much the lord keep you and bless you i pray that as you sleep tonight may the lord God unto your encounters and visitation to as many that are confused may the lord god give you direction via the prophetic an eye to see a hear to hear an encounter by the spirit the bible says when you reach to a crossroad where you don't know where the way is someone will appear an angel will appear and tell you this is the way walk journey may the lord bless you and strengthen you in jesus name i pray amen and amen. i love you so much and everyone thank you so much again.